Hello everybody, my name is Michael Tyler and I'm in the shop today. It's a beautiful day, I've got the shop doors open. You might hear some birds singing in the background or whatever. And it uh, gives a little more light on the subject. I want to show you this. This is the latest Vectric project of the month I designed. I used the VCarve Pro software to, to uh, create this design. You can see on the top, it says Fancy That. So we call this the Fancy That project. Fancy That box for girls of all ages. And you can see that I use the uh, uh, hinges from Lee Valley called No Mortis hinges. These are very easy to install and it uh, doesn't require any type of uh, mortise cutting or pocket cutting or anything like that. You'll see how that goes together in the rest of this video. I think you'll like that. The uh, box construction is very simple, very quick to do. Essentially, you just uh, carve out your four sides and you miter the ends glue them together and then fasten that assembly to the base so it's a very simple construction and then uh, coupled with these no mortise hinges it can go together very quickly so I hope you'll enjoy that part of it I hope you enjoy the entire project this is something that a little girl or a, a girl of any age can store their treasures hair accessories jewelry whatever they want some of the options you might want to consider is lining the box with felt or maybe making a tray or a lift out tray or just simply putting in some dividers in here. So those are all options I'll leave up to you that you can uh, consider and, and uh, do yourself if you like. So this box was uh, designed in the VCarve Pro software, cut out on the ShopBot Buddy, and uh, these files are available through your VNCO account, so you can log into that, download these free files, and away you go. You can also download several other, in fact, dozens of other free projects that are available if you go to the Vectric website, go to the Cool Stuff page, you'll see a listing of all the free projects that are available to you for free, no charge whatsoever. So if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the videos uh, so that you don't miss anything, and I hope you'll enjoy this, have fun with it, and I'll talk to you next month with the next free project of the month from Vectric. parts carved out on the CNC for the fancy that box we just need to uh, free them from the board all the parts from the board those of you who use uh, tabs to hold the pieces in you know the drill We got all the parts separated from the boards and I'll just uh, sand off these uh, tabs and be back with you. Okay I'm gonna have to miter the corners on all the uh, box sides and I'm just using a, a chop saw for that. 
And what I've done is I uh, have cut the parts to the perfect length. So what I need to do is to line up the teeth of this saw right along the edge. I'm not sure if you can see that very well with the video. I can't uh, use the tripod. I just can't get in there close enough with it. But you may be able to see that these teeth are lined up right on that corner edge where I'm going to cut that miter. And uh, just for insurance, and so I get the same length, exact length, on the uh, next piece. I've got the two short sides and the two long sides. I've just put in a, a stop block here so that I can just place that against there and I know it's not going to wiggle on me. And then when I've done that side, I'll flip it around, use that stop block, and I'll be lined up with that, that edge uh, just like it was on the other side. And then I'll do the other short side and the two long sides. So I'm not going to be able to hold this camera while I'm cutting the miter, but I'll turn it off and then turn it back on to show you after I've cut the miters on both ends. I forgot to mention that uh, when you want to avoid chip out on the bottom of that cut as that chop saw goes through, you can wrap a little painter's tape. I just put tape on both sides so that it's, it's uh, equal thickness on both sides. And that will help prevent the wood tearing out. This is the bottom of the cut where that chop saw went through. You can see that tape is holding in that little sliver of wood. So the tape really helps to keep those edges clean. All right, each of these parts have been uh, miter cut. And you'll notice on the sides, there's an up and down on this design. It doesn't matter which way you want it. You can have it that way if you want or whatever. But just make sure that when you glue these things together, that these designs are all oriented the same way. So just verify that, for instance, I'm just looking at these as the large curls down in the middle, large curls down, large curls down, large curls down. So that way I know I've got all my parts lined up properly. And we'll just glue these together and uh, you may have some sort of box clamp or something, but I'm just going to use blue tape to hold this together. And once that's uh, set up, then we'll glue this all to the bottom piece of the box. So I'll just apply some glue on the ends here. And we'll just put it all together, tape together until it's uh, set up nice and good, and let it dry. Okay, I don't want to starve these joints for glue, so just making sure I got plenty of glue in there. Get a little bit of squeeze out, that's good. Now I'll just apply some tape around the corners here. And of course, I've got a nice flat surface that I'm gluing this up on. And some wax paper just to protect the surface underneath. All right, I'll just continue doing that and come back to you when it's all set up. Okay, the side glue up is all finished and dry. And what I've done is I've just uh, centered the side assembly on top of the, the box base. And I just want to mark that position inside here in the four corners. And that'll give me a guide for placement for glue up. So I'm just going to glue this assembly to the base. And you can clamp it or weigh it down till it's dry. Uh, you could also, after it's dry, you could drive uh, pin nails or even screws, countersunk screws underneath into the ends or the edges of the uh, box assembly if you want to. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, apply the glue to this and we'll get that fastened down and glued to the base. So 
So I'm just using the marks that I made for placement. And I've got a generous amount of glue there, so there's liable to be some squeeze out. Yep. And I'm just gonna let that set for a, a few minutes before I weigh it down, because I don't want to slip around on that wet glue. Let's let it tack up a little bit. This is that translucent wood glue. It's a, a fast setting glue that I like to use and it dries clear. Okay, I'll come back to you when this is all glued up and uh, dry. We'll go to the next step. All right, the box is all uh, glued up and dry. It's time to put on the hinges. That's my least favorite part about building a box is putting on the hinges, but I have found these non-mortise hinges from uh, Lee Valley. And these are the three quarter inch size to fit the three quarter inch material. And basically, you just uh, press them onto the material like so and uh, drill your pilot holes for number four screws. I've used number six screws before, but the number four screws are really more suited to this. And I've got the uh, brass coated or, or brass uh, number four half inch screws for that. So I've got one of these uh, Stanley center punches, which makes it really easy to get that uh, hole or dimple for your drilling of the pilot hole. You just place it there and tap it with a hammer and it perfectly centers the pilot hole there. These are a little awkward in a small space because of the uh, hinge connector here, but it's manageable. Okay, so I'll go ahead and drill the pilot holes and install the screws on these two hinges and then uh, come back and show you how I line up the lid for the uh, uh, top pilot holes and uh, screw holes for the lid. There's not enough room for me to fit my drill in here to drill these pilot holes and I don't have a, a small hand drill so I'm just going to use an awl to make the pilot holes for these number four half inch screws on the inside and then I'll just use my drill to do the top pilot holes. I've got a uh, 564 inch uh, drill bit in here, which is just the right size for these number four screws. I don't know if you can see that in the video or not, but uh, using a 564 inch bit, go down about a half inch. I'm just eyeballing this, but you can put a little flag of tape on there to make sure that you go on the uh, right depth, not too deep. I'll just uh, put in these screws and then come back and show you the how we do the lid. All right, time for the lid. What I'm going to do is use a glue gun to put a few dabs of glue on these hinges and then lay on the lid, line it up before the hot glue sets up. Allow it to set once it's aligned, and then carefully open this, and I've got this towel back here, just kind of add support. And then I'll be able to mark with a pencil the locations for the uh, uh, screw holes and uh, drill some pilot holes there. I'm gonna use some thin cardboard I've cut up just to help elevate this when I close it down so it's, it's up just a little bit. You can use old business cards or whatever and just uh, make a thickness to where it's, it's going to make good contact with the lid once you squished it down on that hot glue and allowing it to cure. Look at a couple thicknesses there. 
And we'll put a couple dabs of hot glue. Got to work kind of quick because this, this stuff, once it cools, it sets up and you won't be able to reposition that lid. So just work quickly, line the lid up like you want. Press it down, allow it to cool and set up. All right, I'm going to let that set for a little bit, and then I'll come back and uh, open it up, show you how we mark for the hinge holes. Okay, that's set for a couple of minutes. Let that cool. I'm just going to carefully swing this lid back, try to keep those hinges in position. And then I'll just mark just trace around the inside of these holes with a pencil. I'm not going to be able to use that center punch that I used before for centering the pilot hole in these hinges. There's just not enough glue hold there to keep that in place to hold up under the pounding. So I'll just draw these and then I'll eyeball it and drill some pilot holes in the in the uh, inside of those uh, hinge holes. All right, I've uh, gone ahead and removed the lid from the hinge, and I'm just going to peel off this hot glue. While it's still fresh, then I'll use my awl to make some pilot holes for the drill before I drill my pilot holes give the drill a good spot to start out with. Now if this hot glue doesn't peel off easily for you, just take a heat gun or hair dryer and uh, just wave it over that hot glue and that'll soften it up, loosen it up, make it easier to remove. So I'm, I'm just marking the center of these holes that I trace for the hinges just to give the drill bit a place to bite into to start with, keep it from wandering. And then I've made a little flag of tape on my drill. So that way I'm not going to drill too deep and go through that lid where I shouldn't, shouldn't need to. So I'll just drill these pilot holes down to that flag. Then I'll be able to put the lid back on and install the, finish the install of the hinges. Okay, so after all that work, getting the hinges installed, now we need to take them off before we apply the finish. But we've got all the holes and everything's aligned, so after we apply our finish, it'll be all set to reinstall the hinges. All right, as part of the finish prep, I'm just giving the parts a coat of thin bullseye seal coat. I've thinned it uh, half and half with denatured alcohol. Seal coat, bullseye seal coat is simply de-waxed clear shellac. So it makes a good sealer. It also helps uh, expose any uh, grain or fuzzies after the first coat or two and uh, give it a light sand and it gives you a nice smooth surface. And plus, being shellac, it gives you a nice surface to apply your final finish over. So it seals and it helps with the uh, sanding as well. It stiffens up any fuzzies that might exist there. It makes them easier to sand off. So I'll go ahead and just continue applying this seal coat. And after one coat and a quick sand, I'll see if it needs another one or not. 
and then we'll apply the final finish. Okay, I sanded the seal coat and did not need a second coat. I think it sealed pretty well. And I'm about ready to apply the final finish. In this case, I debated about applying a gray stain overall and then wiping it off and then applying a sort of a dry brush of uh, white over that and maybe even sanding it and scuffing it a little bit to make it look a little aged. But uh, ultimately, after talking to my wife about it, uh, we both decided, you know, it probably would look great just left the natural wood color and just apply a clear coat and keeping it uh, the light color. The carvings do show up well uh, just with their own shadows, the shadow of light enhancing the carving. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'm just going to go with a uh, clear coat and I'm using a Krylon rattle can gloss crystal clear. Now the gloss, I may just buff it out a little bit with uh, steel wool or uh, the nylon type steel wool, not real steel, just to tone it down a little bit, or I might apply a uh, satin over it. I like this Color Max Clear by, by Krylon because I can apply several light coats in a very short period of time. You only have to let each coat sit for about a minute before you can, uh, you can apply additional coats. So I'm gonna apply several coats of this over the box and the lid. I've already done the, the bottom of the lid and the bottom of the box, so. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll just uh, give several coats of this Krylon Clear. Okay, the finish is dry on the box and I've uh, gone ahead and uh, reinstalled the hinges on the lid. I left them a little bit loose just in case I need to make any final adjustments for alignment purposes. So I'll just go ahead and place these hinges back in place where they were in the first place and screw them in with uh, the number four wood screws. Now also, uh, you may want to place underneath the box some vinyl bumpers or cork rounds or self-stick cork sheet or something underneath the box just to protect the surface that you place the box upon and maybe raise it up a little bit. So that's an option for you as well. But essentially, we're uh, done with, with the box. This completes the project. I hope you've enjoyed it.